There is now near universal agreement among paleoanthropologists that the fossil specimen that represents the first fully Homo sapiens is Homo 1. The Omo Kibish formations are on the lower end of the Omo River flowing into Lake Rudolph, Lake Turkana. The Omo region was first scouted in the late 1950s by an intrepid young anthropologist from the University of California at Berkeley, Clark Howell. According to Tim White, quote, Howell was friends with such pioneers of African prehistory as Raymond Dart and Lewis and Mary Leakey, end quote. Howell was detained for six weeks at a lonely frontier outpost on the Kenya-Ethiopia border. Tribal conflict and warring factions had made the region unstable during that period. The colonel in charge of the outpost wanted to practice his English. Over rounds of whiskey, the two soon became friends. He allowed Howell to do some limited digging close to the camp. Almost immediately, Howell discovered hominin bones. He reported his finds back to the Leakeys. Years later, Louis Leakey negotiated with King Hale Selassie for safe passage in the Omo. Into the Omo. Leakey organized three teams, the French led by Yves Copon, the Americans led by Clark Howell, and the Kenyans. His brash, pugnacious son, Richard, led the Kenyan team. At the time, the younger Leakey was a bush pilot and safari tourist guide. Competition was intense. Richard resented in his words the haughty French who had to break at sundown each day for their wine and cheese siesta. He also accused the Frenchmen of getting all the best spots. But it was the ragtag Kenyan team that made the first major find. The Omo One skull and fragments were discovered by Richard Leakey's team in southwest Ethiopia, 1967 to 74. The Kenyans had set up camp on the west side of the Omo River. As Leakey later recounted, they had to routinely battle 20-foot crocodiles. Kamoya Kamu, a legend in hominid fossil finding, was the first to spot bone fragments of a skull on a dusty hillside. Later that day, the team recovered teeth, pelvic, and shoulder bones. Richard Leakey and the others originally thought that they had found a Homo erectus. Judging by sediments, they believed the fossils were 150,000 years old. Back in Nairobi, Louis Leakey proclaimed it was a magnificent find. He knew instantly it was a Homo sapiens. Weeks later, another member of the team, Paul Abel, found a more complete cranium dubbed Homo II. Homo I, first fully Homo sapien. All of the great paleoanthropologists are in accord. Homo I is the undisputed first Homo sapien. Smithsonian, quote, one specimen looks very, very much like a Homo sapiens skull, and that's Homo 1, end quote, Rick Potts. BigThink.com 2022, Aurelien Mornier from the Musée de la Homme, quote, Homo 1 possesses unequivocal modern human characteristics, such as a tall and globular cranial vault and a chin, end quote. There are other fossil skeletons in cranium that could be Homo sapiens, such as Jebel or Hood, 320,000 years ago. But Jebel or Hood represents some complications, which may put it just outside of the range of modern humans. There is another specimen that is also considered early modern human, Floresbad from South Africa. But the Homo sapien designation and dating of the skull is hotly disputed. 
New dating of Omo One. NPR interview with Tim White, 2022. Quote, to understand how humans evolved in Africa, you need to, a time frame. And to construct that time frame, one needs to have accurate dating techniques. End quote. The younger Leakey, in his jubilation of the Omo One discovery, overlooked some critical steps in properly dating the fossil and notating precisely the sediments in which it was found. Geologist Celine Vidal, in a joint interview with Tim White, explained to NPR, quote, There was a bit of controversy because the way Omo One was first dated was using an ash layer, but it wasn't found where the fossils were actually found. It was found a bit further away, end quote. The paper for the definitive dating of Omo One was released in 2022, age of the oldest known Homo sapiens from Eastern Africa. Abstract, here we report geochemical analysis that linked the Kamoya's hominid site, Tuff 9, of the Omo Kibish formation that contains Omo One. We obtain a new minimum age for the Omo fossils of 233,000 years ago. The redating of Omo 1 to 230,000 years ago sets up a puzzling timeline for anthropologists. Fran Dory, Australian Museum 2020. Omo 1, dated to the same age as Omo 2, raises interesting questions about why it appears to have slightly more advanced features than Omo 2. Were they from the same population? It is very important to note, Fran Dory, head curator at Australia Museum, wrote that column in 2020, two years prior to the new redating of Omo 1. Fran Dory, one of Australia's top anthropologists, was puzzled as to how Omo 1 and Omo 2 could be so dissimilar in morphology, yet they had roughly the same dates of 190,000 years ago. We now know Omo 1 is fully 43,000 years older than Omo 2. This would strongly imply that two populations live side by side, one archaic and the other modern. Omo 1, Omo 2, and Herto Man. The famous Herto Man was discovered in 1997 in the Afar of Ethiopia. Repeated analysis by researchers puts the date for Herto firmly at 155,000 years ago. Alexa Volkovic, January 2024. One of the striking features of the Herto Man fossils is the combination of archaic and modern traits. The crania display robust facial structures reminiscent of early hominids, such as Homo erectus, with pronounced brow ridges and a relatively large face. This facial morphology is eerily similar to later populations of ibero mauritians in North Africa. We now know from the fossil evidence of Epitome 1, Stringer Harvati, 2019, that fully modern humans were in Europe at least 210,000 years ago. Omo 1 from Ethiopia is dated 10 to 20,000 years before Epitome 1 in Greece 210,000 years ago. Could Omo 1 represent a divergent line of early moderns from 200,000 to 300,000 years ago who migrated to the Levant and then further north to Europe? A study has just been released by mainly Brazilian anthropologists. They appear to have reached precisely that conclusion. Human evolution, what the hard evidence suggests. Introduction. The finding of a modern human skull in Epitome, Greece, dated to 210,000 years ago, and the discovery of Homo sapiens skeletons dated to 194,000 years ago in Mislia, Israel, suggest the possibility of a much earlier dispersal of modern humans out of Africa into the Eastern Mediterranean. Continuing, as soon as our species appeared in Africa, 
they started migrating out of that region, having reached the Middle East around 180,000 years ago and Europe at least around 200,000 years ago. Divergence. Definition, a situation in which two things become different or the difference between them increases. With such a divergence hypothesis, OMO-1 could represent a population that left Africa 230,000 years ago into the Levant and then northward to Europe, or even earlier. Could Hurtoman represent an archaic population that did not expand beyond the African continent? Is Omo 2 at 190,000 years ago more closely related to Herto Man at 165,000 years ago rather than Omo 1? Both Herto and Omo 2 representing a direct lineage to modern Africans? Big Thing 2022. Omo 2 often has been described as possessing more primitive features. Many Africans today, particularly in Northeast Africa, have striking archaic features. A unique and exceptional population of Homo sapiens with archaic lineage? Thanks for watching. We've only scratched the surface on this topic. There's much more to come.